What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be explaining the different functions of the different buttons on this gimbal right here, the, new, the brand new DJI RSC2. There's so many different shortcuts to get to other different modes that this uh, gimbal has that I'm going to be showing you guys today. This gimbal was just released on October 21st, so there's a lot to be learned about it. So if you want to figure out how to use this gimbal, if you just purchased it or are going to be getting it, then stick around for this video right here. And let's get started, y'all. Before we begin talking about the different modes, I'm going to talk about the power button. The power button performs very few functions. So to power on the gimbal, all you have to do is press the power button for about three seconds. So I'm gonna do that right now. Once you power on the gimbal, it's going to recenter itself, showing that it's ready for operation. Another function of the power button is to put the gimbal in standby mode, which basically saves you power when using the gimbal. So to do that, all you have to do is double tap the power button twice. So tap it twice, slowly, one, two, and then you're going to see a little icon on the gimbal showing that it's in standby mode and you know it's in standby mode. Okay, so right now I'm in standby mode. The gimbal is not going to react to anything. It's almost like it's off, but it's still on. So there's this little moon icon you're going to see on the one inch OLED screen that's going to help you determine that you're in standby mode. To power off the gimbal, all you have to do is hold the power button for a few seconds as well, just like you did to power it on. Right there, so I've powered it off right now. I'm going to turn it back on. Next up, I'm going to talk about all the modes on this gimbal that you can use for different shooting options. Some of these modes have shortcut buttons that you can use to get to them quicker, which I'm going to be telling you guys as well as I go through each mode. So if there's no shortcut, I'm not going to be talking about that one. But if there is a shortcut, then I'll tell you there is a shortcut and what it's for or how it works. Okay, let's begin. Now I have my gimbal powered on. So the first thing I notice is that I'm in PF mode, which is just pan follow mode. So pan follow mode basically allows the gimbal to follow you only along the pan axis. So your hand grip movement responds only along the pan axis. So if you try to do anything with the roll axis or the tilt axis, it's just gonna stay in position. The camera is not going to move in any direction. So it's just going to stay right there. So pan follow, that is. There's no shortcut for that. To get to that, all you have to do is turn on the gimbal and cycle through the different user profiles using the M button right here. So I'm going to switch to the next mode, which I'm going to do using the M button again. Okay, so we're in mode two right now. Mode two is pan and tilt follow, PTF. When you're in this mode, the pan and the tilt axis both follow your hand grip movements, not the roll axis. So the roll axis stays in place. So you, if you move along the pan axis and the tilt axis, you see how it responds, but if you move along the roll axis, it's still locked. So that's not a cool mode you can use right there. I'm gonna cycle to the third mode right now, pressing the M button again. Now I'm in FPV mode, which is just going to allow all three axes to respond to your hand grip movements. The gimbal is going to respond in whatever direction, you know, your hand grip movements go. So right here, along the pan axis, it responds. Along the roll axis, it responds. And along the tilt axis, as you can see. So it follows your hand grip movement along all three axes. That's one of my favorite modes, but you can figure out which one works best for you. The next mode I'm going to be talking about is portrait mode. So this mode, to get to it, you cannot just cycle through the mode button. What you have to do is double tap the mode button to get to portrait mode. So all you have to do is tap it twice. So portrait mode is basically for social media. So if you have a TikTok account, if you have an Instagram account, and you shoot a lot of vertical videos, then you're going to love this option. So all you have to do is double tap M to get to this mode. Super easy. The same applies to get out of this mode. The next mode I'm going to be talking about is 3D Roll 360. So this mode is great for cool shots. So if you wanna take cool video shots, you know, where the camera is rotating, create that illusion, then you're going to love this mode. So to get to this mode, all you have to do is press the M button, which is the mode button, three times. So I'm gonna press the button three times to switch to that mode. So right now we're in 3D 360 roll mode. To activate the 360 roll, all you have to do is push the joystick either right or left. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So right there, you see that? So automatic roll, so it started that. It's now rotating the 360 roll. You can easily just push it forward like this and create the illusion of a 360, you know, shot right there. It's a cool mode to use, you know, as a filmmaker, if you're going to be taking a lot of cool shots. To stop continuous rotation, all you have to do is double tap the trigger button right now, right there. So as you can see, it stopped rotating. Now, if you want to exit, the 3D roll 360 mode, all you have to do is triple tap the mode button again. 
So we're back in default mode, landscape shooting. Next stop, I'm going to talk about sport mode. Sport mode basically allows you capture fast moving scenes. So if you're going to be making content for sports mostly, then this is going to be a great mode for you to try. This mode is not as conventional to get to as the rest of the other modes. It's easy to do, but most people will not know about this mode unless you actually shoot for sports and you know you're seeking this mode. So I'm gonna show you guys how to switch to this mode. To do that, all you have to do is press and hold down the mode button. When you press and hold the mode button, there's going to be a little running man icon at the top of the OLED screen showing, showing that you're in sports mode. The one catch with this one is, if you let go of the mode button, then you're going to exit sports mode. So if you want to stay in sports mode, all you have to do is double tap the trigger button as well as hold the mode button. Right now I'm in sports mode because I've got the mode button pressed and held down. As you can see, the gimbal is more responsive. It moves quicker because when you're shooting sports, you want the gimbal to respond a lot quicker. So I'm gonna let go of that button right now. You're gonna see that it's not going to stay in sports mode. So right there. It's not in sports mode anymore, so the reaction is just a little bit slower. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to do it and remain in sports mode. So press and hold the mode button again. Once the running man shows, then you double tap the trigger button. Right now the running man icon remains at the top of the screen and I'm no longer pressing and holding down the mode button. So that shows that I'm now in sports mode. So it's staying in sports mode because I've pressed the trigger button twice now. Now I'm going to exit sports mode. And to do that, all you have to do is the same way you went into it. So you have to press and hold the mode button and then double tap the trigger button to get out of sports mode. So I'm gonna do that again. The running man icon is gone. And that's because we're no longer in sports mode. So let's talk about lock mode. So lock mode basically keeps the camera in place. So to get to this, it's super easy. All you have to do is press and hold down the trigger button. So you press and hold down the trigger button and the camera stays in place. Every single axis is locked. So right there, as you can see, nothing's moving, nothing's happening right there. So that's how lock mode basically works. This next mode, a lot of vloggers and YouTubers are going to like. It's selfie mode. This mode is super easy to get to and it makes vlogging super easy. When you have this mode on, the camera rotates 180 degrees and faces you directly. So you can hold it out and, you know, shoot selfie type content, vlogger type content, you know, all that selfie style video. To do that, all you have to do is triple tap on the trigger button. So three times and you're in selfie mode. So you can just hold out the gimbal and then talk. All you have to do to get out of that mode is double tap the trigger button right here. The next mode I'm going to talk about is the custom mode. So this mode allows you to choose which axis you wanna keep locked or unlock. It's a sick mode if you're going to be doing specific kind of shooting. To access custom options, all you have to do is push on the side dial. You get a little menu option where you can cycle through. So follow, auto-tune, all that stuff. So push again on the side dial to access the mode settings or the different modes. And then you cycle down to custom. So there's gonna be different options, PF, PTF, FPV, and custom, as well as 3D roll, 360, and portrait. But you wanna just go to custom. So just go to custom right there. So right now I've got every single one turned on in my custom settings. So tilt, roll, and the pan axis are all turned on. I can turn off any one I want or turn off all three of them. So I'm gonna do that right now. Turn off each of them. And right there. The gimbal is locked in place. Everything's turned off. Here are two more cool shortcuts you should probably know. So if you double tap the trigger button down here, the gimbal recenters itself. So right now, you see that right now? So anytime the gimbal is out of place, if you move it too quickly or it goes out of place, then just double tap the trigger button and it's going to recenter itself every single time. You can also press the trigger button once to activate Active Track 3.0. But to use this option, you need the Raven Eye image transmission system. So that's a separate piece that costs about $159 US. But if you want to use that function, you have to get that piece. After balancing your gimbal every time, you want to also auto tune it so it calibrates for you know any little mistakes you might have made during the balancing process. So I'm gonna show you guys three ways to do that right now. The first way to do that would be to use the side dial right here. So the side dial button right here, if you tapped it, you get a menu from which you can cycle through to find auto tune right there. So what you wanna do is then click on the side dial again and then you start it. You see right there, there's a super smooth mode, which is a whole different mode that you can explore later. You need an extra hook and strap to use it with lenses. To auto tune, what we're gonna do now is cycle up and then hit the side dial to start. 
so the calibration is now successful I'm going to show you guys the second way you can do this right now to auto tune using the second method all you have to do is hold down the mode button as well as the trigger button so hold both of them down and it goes into calibration status so I'm gonna do that again right now You want to make sure that you hold down the mode and the trigger button for a little bit. So don't just tap on it. Make sure you hold it for a little bit for it to go into calibration status. That's the second method you can do. The third method involves connecting your phone to the Ronin app and then doing it off of there. So I'm going to connect my phone via Bluetooth to the DJI Ronin app and then calibrate off of there. If you want to do this off the DJI Ronin app, all you have to do is open it up. I just opened mine. It's already connected to the DJI RSC2 gimbal because I've already connected to it before. If you want to, you know, connect to yours, all you have to do is go up in this little menu right here click on it and then choose your device so I already have mine on there so I'm just gonna go ahead and auto tune directly from my phone so what you want to do for that is click on motor parameters right there as you can see there's each axis and the amount of power being provided to it and you just auto tune right there and then click OK as you can see the gimbal is calibrating itself now that's the third way to calibrate or auto tune your gimbal now I've got the USB-C the micro USB cable connected it connects the camera to the gimbal so there's a port right here on the tilt arm that allows you to connect the camera directly to the gimbal using a USB-C to micro USB cable so I've got that connected right now now I'm going to test out the record button to start and to stop recording all you have to do is tap the record button down here so you tap it and it starts recording right there so right now I'm recording what's going on by just tapping the record button on the gimbal so that allows me to do it without having to do it directly off the camera to stop recording all you have to do is press the same button again so just push it and it stops recording if you want to take a picture with it all you have to do is switch to the picture mode and then next all you have to do is push and hold this button so you push and hold it and you get a picture taken during a shoot you switch between and take a picture right then and there so another thing you can do is half press the record button to autofocus don't fully push it so just half push it and it autofocuses next thing we're going to talk about is the front dial so this is a new addition to the DJI RSC2 which was which wasn't on the original DJI Ronin SC that allows you to control a bunch of different options on your camera things like your ISO your aperture your focus all that stuff to access the front wheel menu and let you control different options all you have to do is use the side dial right here you push on it and then you cycle through the different modes to look for the front dial so I'm gonna find that right now so right there is my front dial push on it to select it and then you can choose what you want the front dial to change so you select the functions and right now I've, I've got it set to aperture I'm gonna change that to ISO and then I'm going to adjust the ISO using the front dial right now so right now I'm adjusting the ISO directly from the front dial this makes it so easy for you to do things on the fly I'm going to try to adjust the aperture now using the front dial all you have to do is switch from the ISO to the aperture to do this so I'm gonna switch to the aperture right now and I'm gonna select that so now I'm going to use the front dial to control the aperture right now right there I'm controlling it directly from the focus wheel this gives you a lot of options and a lot of freeform control over your camera directly from your gimbal so that's all I've got for you guys on this video right now so I hope you guys have learned something about all the different controls the modes the settings and the shortcuts that can help you shoot professional footage and cinematic footage with your brand new DJI RSC2 if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe you know to my channel if you enjoy videos like this one make sure to check out the video on the screen right now and I'll catch you guys in my next video. It's Midas, and I'm out, y'all.